Hi, this is Jim Stark with the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another Cracking the Box. This one's going to be a bit different because uh, we're celebrating our 10th anniversary of uh, putting a video up on on uh, Kit well, on YouTube actually. Uh, our first video went up, uh, I think, last Friday, the uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, yes. We probably were the first hobby video, at least scale modeling. I couldn't find any. I remember looking back in the day. Uh, I thought maybe maybe somebody's on here doing model kits or so forth. And if somebody has an older video than 10 years for, for scale modeling, point it out to me because I will gladly step down from the throne and, <laughs> and uh, not claim that we had the the oldest hobby video because uh, you know, that would be wrong. But uh, but yeah, no, I mean, most of the people who uh, who are popular now uh, channels that you guys are on here right now are probably watching this. Uh, you know, you guys started up, what, like five years ago, uh, six years ago. Ten years is a long time on YouTube, and uh, yeah, we were we were there. Uh, granted, we didn't we didn't publish a lot of videos for quite a while, but uh, yeah, the first one was ten, ten, ten whole frickin' years ago. My goodness. All right, well, let's get back to what we got here. This is the Tamiya Type 10 tank, and uh, it is a new kit. Hasn't yet been actually uh, kind of arrived on the, the doorstep of North America and, and maybe Europe. I'm not sure. Uh, Europe could be a little quicker. With their shipments from Japan, but the kit has been released in Japan and is making its way towards retailers all over the world. And uh, this is a 148th scale kit. They did release a 116th scale kit, which I did review a while back. I'm not sure how much of this kit is going to share uh, common features with its big brother. Obviously, not not a whole lot of the the, the scale difference. Uh, and I believe they've released a 135th scale version of this at some point, even earlier than that. So, but let's go ahead and crack open the box, shall we? Uh, the side panels, just quick, real quick here. I'm doing this, by the way, on my phone because I decided to try to do the, do a little bit of a construction project on this, uh, being that we're going to do do this kind of as a hey, we we really should build a model on the on the channel, huh? After 10 years, um, this is the first company, first tank battalion of the Japanese Self Defense Forces. Obviously, this showing two Tamiya colors, uh, TS90 and TS91. Uh, and then on the other side, we've got, again, basically just more information, most of it in Japanese. So you can see the, the kit is kind of uh, Japanese-centric, obviously, being a, uh, a Japanese self-defense force tank. All right, opening it up real quick, we've got the instruction manual and a uh, background uh, note, photos and nomenclature as well with background information, uh, which you can see that uh, kind of gives you a... Uh, kind of a tour around the tank, different different uh, items, the commander's cupola, the commander's sight, the environment sensor, the turret rack, the communications antenna. Oh, good stuff to know. And on the back side they have the uh, kind of more uh, distinct uh, camouflage and uh, all that good stuff there. All right, so then the manual goes over basic instruction. You can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, putting together the lower hull with the uh, with the additional weights in it to, to give it uh, some nice weights. Uh, got tracks going together, um, lower suspension, side skirts. Moving on to back detail, and then we have the upper deck going together with the gun. That uh, nice little equipment rack in the back, uh, commanders, cupola, and so forth. And all those pieces finally going together with a 50 cal machine gun, I guess. So, all right, real quick, moving on. Uh, just kind of going, going to go through the parts real quick here, just open them up, just like I would with any of my unboxing. But then we're going to go start building it. What do you think? Building, building, building. Uh, all right, so on this piece we've got. Uh, let me go ahead and kind of pull this out of the way so we can see it a little bit better. Um, we've got some of that that rack, a lot of the detail pieces, the. Uh, Top hatches, uh, then on this next piece, I may, have, I may edit some of this bit out, so maybe you won't hear me talking here, or maybe you will. Uh, and then we've got the upper turret, uh, some of the side hull pieces, some of the side turret pieces. Uh, so definitely a lot of uh, kind of side construction with this. Obviously, again, try to keep this kit small and fit in the, the standard 148 scale box that to me it seems to always get away, away with doing the same box. Uh, upper deck detail looks like they've got some nice uh, surface any slip surface detailing on here um, they've got the rubber whatever they are material side side skirts that I noted on the uh, 16 scale were also that way um, fairly thin uh, parts here which is good 
And then the last piece are the tracks, road wheels, and other suspension bits, I think. And those look like this. So you've got upper and lower track sections and the curved bits that go around the sides. Um, this is just part of that weight holder bit. The suspension arms are individually molded on here. The um, idler and sprocket wheels, well, actually the sprocket wheels, uh, back idler is where? Hmm. I don't know, I'll have to look at the actual tank to see. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the way that one's set up. Um, it probably just looks like a regular road wheel, I guess. And then the decals, which uh, let me see if I can get the these in front of the camera properly. So yeah, pretty basic, but you know, good for 48 scale. The counterweights are in the box, the little rubber grommets are in the box, and that's it, really. So it's going to be a quick build, and we'll go start it now.
the conclusion of the build uh, that I started uh, with the uh, after unboxing the kit, obviously in the earlier part of this video. Um, and I'm not sure how I've strung this together because I obviously have uh, lots of footage of me building the kit as well as commentary. But I don't think that um, an hour and a half video or th two hour video or whatever how much, how much footage I had of actual putting parts together is going to quite work. So I've, I've probably done something to kind of like give you a speed build um, with the uh, maybe some commentary or text commentary added in. So how do I feel about the kit? Um, I liked it. It was uh, it was pretty easy to put together. There were a few challenges, uh, mostly the tracks um, and some other small little little small parts uh, for me uh, as a returning modeler slash someone who doesn't build constantly, like most of you guys uh, are. Um, but yeah, I know typical to me equality. Uh, let's go ahead and get a closer up look here, and I'll I'll kind of go over what I've. Alrighty, so um, hope this is focusing at a reasonable focal length. I think it is. I can't quite tell on my, my camera whether it's coming in, in focus or not. Um, so the, um, the kit comes apart. I've, I've left it in, intentionally. Um, you know, the, 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 obviously the turret comes off. Uh, this top section, uh, there's a small little um, uh, bit here which you can kind of see uh, on this piece that uh, kind of gives you a, you know, a snap-in or a glue, a glue point and then the back uh, obviously just kind of falls in place, which eventually will be sealed up. But I've, I've left these parts off um, so that I can paint uh, eventually. And um, the only other piece I've left off is the, the tow rope cable, which I just managed to drop on the floor. Gray floors and uh, dark green plastic do not go together well. Uh, although I, I was impressed, I did probably drop about 20 pieces, you know, uh, during the course of building it. And I was able to find all of them. Some of them took a little longer than others, but, <laughs> but yeah, none, none of them escaped me. So here's the, the, uh, the, the tow cable, uh, which uh, just basically goes on the back here. There, there are two hooks on the rear of the, the top hull, and then the, it, it kind of fixes in here on the back uh, heat exchanger unit. Um, a little bit on the instructions, uh, just be careful with these toolboxes, it, it kind of the placement is a little uh, not quite precise in the instructions. Um, the only thing I was kind of um, disappointed with is, I don't know if you can see it in the video or in this video, but but the 50 cal kind of leans to one side, I'm sure it's leaning this way or that way, but um, but yeah, the I guess the, the points at which the mount goes in on the side, uh, there's a lot of play there and it's just not sitting. I uh, can't really turn it though. It's, it's pretty much in there solid. I left the gun, you know, swiveling and, and, and moving up and down. So um, there's no ammo in the ammo. I assume this is a side ammo feed and there's no ammo in there. So not quite sure how that works. You'd think it would be a covered ammo uh, feed. Unless that's the out in the ejection area there. There's something on the front obviously that's some kind of collector. So I'm not really sure what that is. but. Um, and if this is the ammo here feeding in from the right, you guys would know more than I would. Um, but usually I thought it was the other way around and the ammo fed from the left side. And then this would have been the uh, shell casing um, collector, I guess. But um, anyways, so um, there is a small uh, section up front here that is the commander driver's... I, I don't know. This, I know this is the commander's like camera viewport over here in the commander's hatch, but I'm not sure what this, uh, who uses this unit in the crew. But there's a little uh, panels that can be open or closed, so that's something. Um, as I think I noticed, um, or I noted in the the buildup, but it, I don't know if the, I'll have that in here. The smoke dischargers aren't accurate, at least on photos that I've seen online. Um, in the photos online, they're actual holes in the top section of the the turret that essentially like there's a hole there's a hole there's a hole a separate four separate holes not not the way they've done it here where they've kind of made one big hole and then given you these um i guess uh they they do have covers it appears they have covers over the uh over the smoke uh, dischargers so maybe they maybe they tilt up when the dis when they go out I, I don't i don't know how the this, the mechanism works but anyway so that that does that part does look a little off in terms of uh, maybe they've changed it. Maybe the newer models uh, don't uh, do that. So the basket goes together really well. I was uh, really impressed 
how such delicate pieces in 48 scale essentially all matched up and uh, and worked. So that was something I was impressed with. Um, there was, uh, just in case you run into this problem, there's a small piece that goes in this little inlet here that normally is empty. And that is, I don't know if it's a siding unit or what it is, but um, but that I found is my like the last piece I hadn't put on the, the kit. So I had to track it down in the manual and I couldn't initially find where it was in the manual. I just, I just couldn't find it so um, but yeah so again these all go together uh, pretty easily uh, as long as you get that front tab part in place um, like that and click back in place and there we go so um, it's interesting doing a, this is probably the first 48 scale armor kit I've ever done so yeah it was kind of interesting from that perspective working in this scale um, kind of uh, no, I'm cutting myself off there we go all right um, yeah, and so I liked it. It was, it was nice. And, um, uh, I don't know if more I can say, obviously I'm going to do the, the painting of this and the, the paint schemes are a bit boring because I guess the, the Japanese have only done one major, um, version, I guess, of, of their, their color, their camo pattern, which is the pattern included with the kit and, and the indicated instructions and so forth. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's not very interesting. I know there's some modelers online who have taken the type nine, like winter partial winter camouflage and have done some interesting things there. I might do something like that to kind of snazz it up a bit because otherwise it's a very kind of dark green and browns and, and it's just not, you know, I don't know, just not that appealing. Um, there was an actual prototype that was a slightly, I think different color, maybe like a gray or a dark gray or something. Um, but I don't know the difference is the prototype probably has different um, equipment than this so that that wouldn't be worth trying to do right now um, I'm not sure what these can everybody like maybe in the video to what are, what are the three holes do is this ventilation or what, what is that it's just it looks kind of odd when I first saw those I was like did I not put pieces in that were supposed to go in there um, it just seemed it just looked a little weird but there's obviously a function for them um, the deck detail just looking at the top again um, you know there's a shovel back here um, there's the obvious stuff on the, the top of the, the hull, but there's not, not really much else. I mean, they don't include anything like what would be in the storage bin back here. So anything like that, you'd have to add in yourself, uh, or find, um, some kind of, you know, authentic Japanese, um, equipment. So, um, to go in there, but otherwise, yeah, it's a great, it's a great kit worked out well. Um, nothing but good things really to say about it uh, and I hope that you guys get some insight from this build and uh, this is our, our our anniversary 10 year anniversary YouTube video first upload build so I can finally say I, I look I built it now it's not painted yet but yeah but that's next that's the next hurdle to get over so thanks for watching guys and if you have any comments uh, questions suggestions please leave them below uh, let me know how you like this. Uh, you know, I can do more of these. This took a lot longer, obviously, than my normal videos would take. Uh, but no, I, I did enjoy uh, building a kit and, uh, and the challenge of potentially uh, finishing it up and, and uh, making it look good in the sense of, um, uh, you know, I might even find a little base or something to put this on so it can have a, it's a little, little home somewhere here in the office. And then I do really uh, plan on doing the, the 1 16th scale uh, now that I've done this one. Not that I have, a, I mean, I, I think this is a very pretty tank in terms of just the, the design elements of it. Uh, it's kind of like essentially the most modern looking tank that's out there when you think about it. Um, but, uh, and I don't mean that as a diss to like the Merkavas or anything. I'm just saying it is the most recent new main battle tank construction out there that I'm aware of anyways. Maybe, maybe somebody can correct me on that if I am wrong. But, but it's one of the most recent, let's put it that way. Um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think it has some nice uh, features and, and, uh, uh, learning curvy stuff that obviously the Japanese have learned from other, uh, probably NATO, uh, builds and things. So, um, yeah, if, uh, do all that other stuff I mentioned earlier and our thanks to Tamiya USA again for providing us this sample and, uh, we will, uh, be certainly looking forward to any future items they have coming this way, like the Acura NSX, which we did get last week and, um, not that, now, I would actually kind of like to build that too, but I'm I'm really really boy you know car paint jobs. I think I need to I think I need to do like a tank or something before I try to try to do a car. As uh, Will Patton Patterson will will uh, attest, you know sometimes he just finished his Porsche build, and uh, sometimes those things will definitely <laughs> catch you up if you're not careful uh, in terms of trying to get the perfect paint job. 
So uh, that all said, thanks for watching again. We'll see you next time on Cracking the Box and Building the Kit in this case.